Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. We are back. We are back. It's good to be back. Um, I got to sneeze. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I got a good one for y'all today. We got a difficult one for y'all today. Antonio Vargas versus Jonathan Rodriguez. This was a really tough one to break down and uh, analyze, uh, but we're going to get into it. Um, but before we do... I'm a mess today, guys. But before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3 Boxing, 3 Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie uh, comes at you for every single major fight. So you had to bring down the uh, uh, so you had to bring down the house. The odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing. I do. Uh, we were uh, seven and, and two, I think, the last two weeks. So we're absolutely killing it. We're going to continue this week. This is, week is another home run. Um, join the Patreon as well. The Patreon gets you access to the lock of the week. You can request uh, a handicap, any fight. You get a free T-shirt. All that for just five dollars a month. It's a great steal. It's a great bargain. Just five dollars a month gets you all that and some. Uh, we're doing we're doing big things. We're growing the channel. Uh, this is going to be the number one uh, boxing odds podcast. Uh, and you're going to help it grow. Also, subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. Oh, the link for the uh, for the Patreon is in the description. Please join us five dollars a month. You get all of that and some. Uh, it's a it's a great deal. Um, let's get into let's get into the fight. Um, Antonio Vargas, seventeen and one. I went back. I watched this fight that he lost. Um, it was, I want to say 2019. Yeah, it was 2019. Hang on. I've lost it here. Uh, we're back. It was 2019. Uh, I was trying to find the name. Jose Maria Cardenas was a 16 and four fighter. The fight was in Florida. Uh, he got knocked out in the first one. It was on the card. Jamel Herring, uh, when he won his world title against, uh, I know, I know I'm going to butcher the name. Ito. I'm just going to say the last name. When Jarrell Herring beat Ito for his world title. It was on that card. It was a while back. It was a while ago. Um, let me get into it. He's run off. Let's see. One. I'm looking at it. I'm... I'm I'm dropping the ball here, guys. All right, let's just get into Antonio Vargas. Guy's got explosive power. He throws clean, hard shots. He's a former Olympian for Puerto Rico. Uh, he's not super mobile. He hits good, and, and, and he's got good timing. He punches in between your punches. He's not a you-go, I-go guy like Paul, he says. He throws in good volume for what he is. Um, he, he likes to stand in the exchange, but he can also box from the outside. He seems to have pretty good – I couldn't find his reach, but he seems to have uh, a pretty good reach and height for the weight class. Uh, he gets a little wild and takes chances. He's a fun fighter to watch. This is going to be a firefight. Like, both these fighters are going to be fun. Decent speed, good combinations. Like, he's a good offensive fighter. Like, that, that's really all you can say about him. He likes to come forward. I think he appears to be the bigger hitter in the punt in, 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 of, the do, of, of the two. If you look, look at his record, what is going on here? What is going on? On here, I am really having technical issues today. All right, I'm back. Uh, losing my brain today. If you look at his record, his knockout percentage is, I think, misleading. He's 17 and one with just nine knockouts. He he did get a knockout against Michelle Banquez and against Jose Martinez recently, and then his fight with her. Hernan Marquez went the distance. So two of his last three wins have been by knockout. I think his power is a little underrated. He's got good footwork. He counters well. He's a really good counter puncher. And he's really accurate from long range. Those, those are the notes I got. I'm, I'm having trouble. I'm sorry. I should probably do this video over again. This is, this is not my finest work. So to, to kind of... He's good on the outside. He's accurate on the outside. Um, he, but he's a front foot fighter. He can he can exchange on the inside. He's willing to exchange on the inside. Uh, but he likes to walk you down. He wants to keep you at range and make you go backwards. He's got explosive power. 
he throws explosive power punches. I think his power is a little, a little underrated. I think his power is better than his record suggests. He throws hard, clean shots. He is wide open to be counted. He's not hard to hit. He's got a high guard. You know, he stays in the high guard. Throws in good volumes and is willing to stand in the exchange. I don't like him that much in the exchanges, which is why I'm a little weary, literally weary, a little weary to pick him. Um, Jonathan Rodriguez is an excellent counter puncher too. He can't lead as well as Vargas, which is why I'm leaning towards Vargas. Vargas can lead and he can counter. Jonathan Rodriguez, typical mix, Mexican fighter, make, mixes up head and body really well. He likes a firefight. He starts slow. Like when I say he's not a volume guy, he's going to give away the early rounds in this fight. He starts slow. He's not a high volume guy to start. And then something clicks, and then he becomes, you know, 80 punches around. He's straight in and out. He's not a hard guy at times. Like he's much more fundamentally flawed than his Gonzalez. His head is so stationary. He's so easy to hit, but he got a chin. As easy as it is to hit, his chin is equally as granite. That's why I don't think. Vargas's power, which I tried to play up a little bit and tell you his power is not bad. I don't think he's going to have much of a chance to stop him because I'm telling you, Rodriguez has a special chin. Now, look, the best chin is the one that doesn't get hit, and he's definitely going to get hit. He eats a lot of shots. Again, and he's got decent pop, too. I think Vargas has better pop. Rodriguez is 25-2-1 with 17 knockouts. We, we saw his chin. Tested to the max against Ankejas. Uh, that was back in 2021. If you remember that, he fought Ankejas on a Showtime guard. And that was when Jared Enos fought Sergio Lipinets. It was on that card. And Stan Jonas fought Delarme. It's a nice little card there. But he's too flawed. And, like, I did a video on Ankejas. I, I don't think Ankejas is very good. I'm not saying Rodriguez can't win this fight. This is a hard fight to to make the book on. But you look at his flaws, and I do think Vargas has respectable power. When he just rushes in, straight in, straight out, he's so easy to hit, despite how good his chin is. I don't think that he's going to stop Vargas. So on top of Rodriguez, who I think is going to give away early rounds on lack of, of, of volume because he starts slow, and how easy he is to hit. I just think he runs out of rounds unless he gets a bunch of knockdowns. I don't think his power is spectacular. But he does weigh you down. He does go to the body. It could happen, right? This is a hard fight to bet. I'm betting Vargas, and I think Vargas wins on points. This is kind of my gut. Let's take a look at the odds. Let's show you how to make money on this fight. It's just the money line on it. Vargas is minus 250. He actually, look at that. Look at that. They already changed it on me. Minus 250. The odds are getting worse on Vargas. It was just 245 when I was reviewing this, and it went up to 250, minus 250. So that's not great. Rodriguez is plus 190. I'm almost tempted to do that. I just can't see him winning. Like it's, If this was a little higher, this may be worth the risk. At plus 190, I, I don't think he wins. I don't think it's worth the risk, but it's, it's a path to victory for him. I'm going to take Vargas. I think Vargas wins on points. If you can find that prop on another book, we always use DraftKings. I, I would advise taking that. Uh, but just for the sake of this, let's take Vargas. On a one times bet, I don't love the bet. Uh, I think he wins, but I don't love the odds on this. One hundred dollar bet makes you hundred, makes you forty bucks. And that's what we're locking in here. We're gonna lock into Vargas, forty bucks. It's not a terrible bet. He should win, but this is a tough fight. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, the lock of the week will be out today. You guys will get the lock of the week. Uh, but Please uh, like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes at you for every major fight, showing you how to bring down the house and consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. I always use DraftKings. You can't even use DraftKings in Texas. I don't gamble. But if you do, I'm going to show you how to consistently make another source of income, and we keep doing it week over week. Please join the Patreon as well. The link is in the description for just $5 a month. You get the lock of the week, which will come out today. For the Patreons, you get the free T-shirt. You get a ton of good stuff. You get a ton of perks. You can ask me to handicap any fight and, and way more. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please also subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is February 22nd, 2024. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. <laughs> 
Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay in 